Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, lovely. How are you all this lovely morning? We're good, thanks. And yourself, Kuda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. How are you? Um, still very much intrigued about what I watched last night. Okay. Nice. Wow. You know, I think <laughs> one of the greatest things um, about this particular movie, because I'm from Zimbabwe, um, as much as we're neighboring countries, there's a lot of rich history from South Africa. And I'll be very honest, this was one part of South African history that I had no idea about. So when All I right. watched it, I was like, excuse me? <laughs> this was happening next door and we didn't even know? So, um, I mean, to... We didn't know. <laughs> To um, obviously each of you, you're obviously now reenacting a very rich part of South African history. How did you guys each get, because you know, obviously if you take up a role, that's also really emotionally charged. How did you guys prepare uh, for these particular roles that you all did um, for this movie? Who's going to go first? So, <laughs> go, Michelle. You go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Peter, for having us as well. Um, like you just said now that you, you didn't know about the story, I think a lot of us here as well didn't know about the story, um, even though we are South African. But um, I think, you know, it, it required a lot of, um, uh, like, having a full picture of South African history, which I think uh, our director, Manja Dubey, did an incredible job of. So we truly understood what space we were walking into and how palpable that space is even today. So even though that may have happened in the 1980s, we are still um, feeling a lot of the remnants of that reality today. Um, so a lot of us had this full, rich world that we were given to, to put our characters into and breathe life into them from that um, because of the director. But personally, um, uh, my, my preparation process had been, you know, for many years, um, from about 2018. So I was able to really give um, a lot of time and um, nuance to this character because of the time that I just had with her. Um, I always say that it started off from a, a bit of a negative space. I started off kind of judging her and not comprehending why she made the decision she made, but it required me to be very introspective and go back inside myself and ask myself, why am I doing this? Why do I feel the need to judge someone? Um, in this way, because obviously as a performer, I shouldn't do that, but I think because it was so close to home, um, uh, who she is and, and the decisions that she's made. Um, so it, it really required me to figure her out in every way from the incredible costume and makeup team we had that was able to really break down, not only like her taking her wig off, but the breakdown of the makeup, the clothes she was wearing, so all the physical things were very important in the journey of me understanding Rachel. But then obviously also uh, the internal world was very vital for, you know, why does she have these walls up? What kind of trauma did she go through? How is she dealing or not dealing with that trauma? And the reality of being a black woman um, living with albinism um, you know, at, at any stage of your life and what complexities come with that. Um, but also just the thing of identity, you know, how do we re like relate to one another? How do we feel included in certain groups? Those sort of questions were vital in me comprehending who this person is um, and bringing life to her. Oh, wow. Amazing. Thank you. That was a great answer. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> well, it's kind of like, you're still a little bit different. <laughs> you prepared also. The wig and everything. The wig, everything, man. You don't understand. <laughs> I think for me, it was just like um, reading up what 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 some of the things that happened then from a military point of view, uh, and 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 were there people like me? And I realized that there certainly were. I think for any system like apartheid to exist for as long as it did, there had to be people like me who look like me or, or like my character rather, um, who were helping keep it up, you know, uh, and, and helping keep it going. So I had to figure out what, what kind of people, what would it take first of all, to be a helicopter pilot in 1980 as a black man? And why would you then use that to suppress your people you know what i mean like you've got this great gift you've got this amazing opportunity and you're going to use it for that so it was just a matter of putting someone in that putting myself in that headspace of a character who's like 
incredibly selfish, um, incredibly, I, I think, greedy. And I wanted him to look physically like someone who's a greedy person, overweight and, and, and not attractive. Because sometimes you have these people who are on screen and they're these terrible characters and they're so attractive. This guy had to be someone that you didn't like on sight, you know. Um, and I think that still resonates with some of our leaders to this day in Africa, where we're so short-sighted. We think, if I can just protect my own turf, if I can make for me and mine and, and take from these people, then I'm fine. They can, they can deal with it themselves. And it makes us very bloated and, and greedy and short-sighted. And we don't realize mm. sometimes as African leaders that we're not going to get in. Mm. We're going to end up dying in this situation. Wow. 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 Sure, so, yeah. now I have to follow that. <laughs> Save the best the last. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, your Milton and Steve journey was amazing. Um, in my preparation for Christine specifically, I had kind of like two, two main um, phases almost to my preparation. And the one was the whole Silverton Siege world and the time. I wasn't born in that time yet, like I wasn't even almost born. Um, I also didn't know about this event. I, I also um, didn't, like I always had the idea of what happened in apartheid, but I didn't understand the real, like the actual rules and what was implemented and the way people were made to feel. So researching that and um, getting more context for the world, the South African world at the time. Um, and I also got to speak with some of the women that were in the actual uh, siege on the day mm. of the bank robbery. And that really opened my eyes a lot. Um, and I got, I got all this information that I never would have gotten. So in that way, I really got to delve into the Silverton siege world. But um, the second um, way I got to prepare is this character specifically and this individual. Um, so she is a fictional character. She's not based on a real person who was in there at the time, although there were women working in the bank. Um, and for me, I immediately, like the day I even auditioned, I understood a sense of who she is because um, the way she grew up with a second mother um, who was not her own culture or skin color, um, mm. I also got to grow up. So um, when I was six months old, um, uh, we also got a nanny, but she, um, her name is Mano Misela, and she raised me and she, since I, like, I've never known her to have a different kind of authority in our house, like literally her authority is equal to my mom and dad and she still lives with them, like her family is oh. part of our family, we, um, I personally really never got to deal with inequality in that way, like in our home, because it was always equal. Um, and in that way, I really related with Christine, um, ha having been raised the way she was. Um, so I connected with her in that way. And I, and I got to, in a way, like stand up as someone who's also had an experience of like, this is so ridiculous. Like the idea oh, that yes. people's, cultures even, or skin color, or anything, or age, like those things shouldn't be a reason to treat someone any differently um, or have any less value. So my preparation for Christine was um, quite fun to go and explore and to realize how much I have in common with her. And that made me feel really empowered, like I could tell a story um, wow. that was very real to me um, also. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, before they say, I have to end up. Um, when when we watch a movie or when we watch a series, when we watch a reality show, we kind of understand. We obviously watch trailers. We can understand the plot, what the movie is about. But sometimes when you see a trailer and then you eventually watch the movie and then the movie's done, there's this complete wave of emotion that you go through. So when South Africa, Africa, the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. watch Silverton Siege. What are they going to get from each character? So, Michelle, I know what I got from you, but what 
did you what 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 were you trying to, what what is the world going to um get from Michelle's character from Elani's character and from Tumisha's character from from watching this masterpiece of a movie that's coming out very soon wow wow <laughs> you're up michelle <laughs> oh me sorry, sorry. <laughs> In this oh, right, right, right around nice. okay love it um no I, I think that's an incredible question um i i you know as you prepare you you obviously think about the end product and who is going to receive this um but now also just sitting with the final product and and also having other people receive it it's it's definitely for me it's always been about being as truthful and authentic in portraying this person um, and making everyone realize how beautifully complex, nuanced blackness is. I think that was at the forefront of my aim, you know? Um, and, and I guess the reason why is because that's so closely related to my own lived reality and experience. Um, and I think that often we, in our pursuit of, of making the world see and understand how beautifully complex we are as black people, we forget how beautifully complex we are. And I think it's vital that we inform one another, that we stand together and understand the pain that we come from, but more so how beautiful we are, you know, and how eclectic we are. Um, and that a black person can look like me, you know? Um, and, and I think that was at the heart of what was motivating me, but more so also just trying to bring as many universal issues regarding identity into one body because of, once again, the lived experience that I have and feeling often um, like I'm able to see the world in ways that many people may not if you're not, you know, look, if you don't look like me. Um, so it's, it's also about understanding that um, no matter where you come from, what you've experienced, um, you, you, you may have uh, uh, gone through some sort of uh, identity crisis, you know, trying to figure out who you are, where do you belong, what is your, your, um, your purpose in life, why do you do the things you do, why do you wear the clothes you wear, why have you made the decisions you made up until this point in your life, and I think that Rachel encompasses that um, in many ways as well. I'm gonna let Ilani go first. Okay. Before I wrap Great. Up. Very short answer. <laughs> um, so, in terms of Christine and what I hope audiences get from Christine, is um, the I, the reality that, especially in a time like apartheid, there's never just one good side and one bad side. It's not always as black and white as one thinks it is, and that we all have individual parts to play in this more global issue that is racial inequality at the moment. Um, so hopefully people will start to realize that even if you're not the strongest, most, you know, if you can't shoot a gun, it's fine. You can still be strong and, mm. um, and stand up for what you believe in. Absolutely. You know, Christine does that for people. Yeah, yeah. And, and for me to add to both of those and, and make sure that I kind of consolidated with my character. It's that I hope people can see how we are sometimes complicit in keeping up the systems of the world we don't like, whether it be the injustice yeah. of um, sexual inequality uh, between the males and the females, um, uh, people's sexual preferences, how we're keeping the LGBTQ community out, and how we are complicit in maintaining social status cues and saying to ourselves, how. How do we change that by by making different choices by saying i'm not going to be part of the complicity i'm not going to be that man that is keeping women out i'm not going to be that man that that is keeping people poor or keeping other people who have a different sexual preference than me outside you know and and i think if we can all do that this world will be a better place no absolutely um um i absolutely love the fact that you guys were able to take me through a part of your history. I mean, at the end of the day, we're always going to be um, next door to each other. We're always going to be friends and family. So the fact that you guys managed to embody South African history in such a beautiful, very emotional driven way. Uh, thank you so much for that. I'm very sure there's a Bob and Orders that's going to love it. 
You're going to we'll see. Talk. Straight up. Trust me. Uh, it's going to be a hit. Thank you so much, guys, for being uh, such great uh, sports thank today. You. Unfortunately, my time is up here, but thank I wish you all the best. And thank you so much for giving us great, great, well, especially for me, great content to talk about on radio. But of course, great nah. uh, movies to watch. And for our younger generation as well to watch so they can understand the richness of Salah. Thanks, Kudan. And a big what's up to everyone in Zimbabwe. Love hey. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day, guys. Cheers. Thank you so much. Um, I watched the movie last night. Uh, very emotionally charged. Um, I'm going to be very honest. Uh, as mentioned, I am from Zimbabwe. And I think this is one part of South African history that I had no idea about. Um, it was literally the first time I even went back and I started reading up on it. And I was like, wow, this is such a great part of South African history that I didn't know about. And I think the great thing about uh, the world nowadays is that there are so many spaces and places and creative sites that are now giving us an opportunity to go back there. So, uh, Mr. Dube, when you, yeah. when you sat down and you're like, okay, let me do this, how did you come about with the particular characters? <sighs> Okay. Uh, look, the characters um, uh, that uh, the the real Silverton trio, obviously, you know, we're three guys, and then the and 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 in in our story, it's two guys and a female, you know. So we said to ourselves, you know, I said to myself in working with the writer and the producer Walter Ayers and and Sabelo, I said, how could we you know, push the boundaries, how can we up the standards and so forth, you know, and, and, uh, and really to tell you the truth, it's, it just came organically <clears throat> once the silver, once the Netflix came on board to, to support the development of the project. Uh, and we pitched, I pitched it to them. I said, like, what if, <laughs> and they were like, yeah, what if we love it? Let's, let's explore it. Because I think when they read the drafts, it was three three men that entered the the bank, and then I think uh, I don't know maybe two or three drafts into working with them, I completely spun it around and this made her made made the, the Terra's character a female, and what a what a what I'm and I, it's it's a it's a choice I don't I don't regret. Yeah. No, she played it so well, very 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 well. Um, thank you so much for that, Mr. Dubey. Uh, Mr. Voslu, um, mm. you, you've acted in quite a lot of different movies. And in this particular one, your, your role changed. How did you get into character for this particular role? Because like I did mention, this is a very, it's a very um, great, small moment in South African history. But there were a lot of emotions surrounding it. And sometimes when you're getting into character for such a role... There's so many things that you have to go through. How did you prepare for your particular role in uh, the Silver Sea? Well, first of all, yes, you 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 mustn't feel bad that you didn't know about this. I mean, I was um, I was 17, 18 when this happened, and I didn't know about it, and that's for you know various different reasons. But um, yeah, it's just something that uh, it's it's not a big event. It's not seen as a big event in South Africa. But one of the good things about this film, it's going to educate people, and they're going to. They're now going to, like you did, they're going to go back out and, and read about it. In terms of preparation for the film, you um, one of the nice things, uh, working with Netflix and, and at Mandla's insistence, is we had a rehearsal period. You know, it's so important um, for, for movies or for any kind of a project like this that you have a rehearsal period and you're able to ask all the questions uh, before you get on set, you know, super expensive to make movies. So, you know, when 300 people are standing around and um, it's, it's the wrong time to go to the director and say, well, why is the character walking from this chair to the door? Why isn't he walking to the window? Uh, because that's just not, not a good time to ask that question. You've got 300 people waiting to, to light your walk from the table to the door. You've got to ask those questions during rehearsal. And we did. I mean, we went back and forth. We wrote character bios for Mandla on, on uh, you know, where our characters come from and why they 
and how they got to this moment, who they were until they got to this moment. And Langerman is interesting because he is a cop. He's a white cop. He sort of enforces the status quo. Had he caught these three guys or the, the two guys and the, the woman in our film or the four of them before one of them got killed, he would have just, you know, summarily locked them up and uh, walked away. But because he's forced to engage with them, he starts seeing their point of view. And uh, with Mandla's help, um, um, we sort of crafted the performance to just slowly throughout the film that uh, Langerman comes around and, and sees what, what they're doing is really uh, righteous and uh, that their cause is just. Um, I think like a, a lot of uh, 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 white South Africans, you know, once they, once they were exposed to what's really going on and they got out of that bubble, they're like, no, fuck it, you know, this is not cool. We won't stand for this. We don't want this, you know, we don't want this um, thing called apartheid. So um, uh, it was an interesting journey, and uh, Mandla was, was great in helping me uh, craft this character. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of the film. I think it's one of the, the, the best films I made and one of the important, most important films I made because ultimately it's about South Africa, uh, South African history, where I'm from, and it's the ultimate thing for an artist to um, to tell stories um, from from your own land. Absolutely, I agree with that 100. Um, percent So the last question before I have to go, uh, Mr. Dube, is whenever you you sit down and you are trying to come up with a concept for a movie, when I ever go watch a movie, I watch a trailer. I do a bit of research, on, depending on how big the, the, the movie is, I do a bit of research on the, on the characters and so forth. So in my mind, by the time the movie's done, I'm going to expect some sort of takeaway. When people watch this or when you sat down and you said, I want to do this particular movie, what was the takeaway that you wanted um, the viewers to get? after watching this. This um for Mr. Dubey and for you, Mr. Vosso, because Mr. Vosso, you have a particular character that you play. So what is the takeaway that they're going to get from your particular character hmm. and from you, Mr. Dubey, as the director of uh, Silverton Siege? Well, for me, it's, it's, it, it's, it's always been about, you know, how do we take heritage and use the heritage to, to uplift ourselves? And because the heritage tells us where we come from so that we can know where we're going. And so it was more of about, you know, an upliftment feel, you know, when, when you get a, when you, after you watch a film. Um, and so that's really what I wanted the audience to take away. And I, and I really hope that we achieved that, you know, uh, uh, after watching the film that you're able to go, wow, you know, I feel good and I, I think I can contribute to my you know, to my family and to, to humanity in a better way, you know? Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, same, same for me. I mean, it's uh, one of the things I hope for is that people will go out and, and do some more research on, on the real Silverton trio and the sacrifices they made. And, and uh, because it's coming out April 27th, which is Freedom Day in South Africa, uh, it'll be nice if people can reflect on what that means, that these guys paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, in, in order, you know, for everybody to be free. And uh, here we are 42 years later. And what does that mean? And, and how can we now use our powers of, of freedom, freedom to vote, to kind of structure um, the world we want to live in? So uh, hopefully people will pick up the uh, the mantle. And then I also hope there's, 14 or 15 year old black boys and girls that look at this and, and see that a, this film was made with a, a black director and a black star and that it is possible to tell stories on a level that that Hollywood tells um, African style and we can do it just as well and they'll pick up the mantle and and um, 30 years from now they'll they'll thank Mandla in their Oscar speech and say I saw your movie when I was a kid and I wanted to be a filmmaker and you inspired me. That's what I hope. I think your movie does more than Thanks. inspire. It, it, it goes across generations. Um, it's going to now tell a story, like I mentioned, because I didn't know it. So now that it's come out on a very big platform like Netflix, where there's a very young generation, 
They're going to mm-hmm. get an opportunity to find out a piece of their history that they didn't know. And obviously for us, the rest of Africa, the rest of the world are going to find out all about this. So I mm-hmm. love it. I love African stories. I really feel like the only people who can tell our stories is us. We should be telling the rest of the world our stories. Don't come and get in. A, it doesn't work. <laughs> Let's tell our stories to you guys. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Dube. Uh, great, great learning opportunity at the same time uh, being put through so much. Mercy. Mr. Voslo, you do what you do best. Thank you so much. I cannot wait for it to touch the screens. And I know a lot of people in Zimbabwe are going to be so excited to watch this and they're going to love it. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your history. Enjoy. Thanks, Kuda. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Bye-bye. you so much for having me tonight. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.